Hi, I'm Richard from eData. I'm here to tell you about biometric access control. Biometric access control combines two main aspects. Perfect mobility, you can enter any door without a card, key, or fob, and perfect security. You can never lose your finger. Now, biometric access control with eData is a little bit different. With eData, we have no software or server to install. Everything is actually embedded on the devices itself, so that installation is as easy as running wire. By the end of this video, I will have gone through the individual components, and you will be able to install your own eData biometric access control system. Now let's begin. Now let's talk about the components that make up an eData biometric access control system. Now we can think about the components in three broad categories. You have the master unit, which is essentially the brains of the system. Now, the master unit is what's replacing your server and software. This is where you're changing schedules, enrolling a new user, and this is actually where the database is stored for the access control system. Next, you have the door unit. If the master unit's the brains of the system, again, controlling schedules and databases, the door unit is like the arms of the system. That is where you're connecting your readers, your locking hardware, and your request for exits. Next, lastly, and, and I would say most importantly, you have your fingerprint key. That is what we call our biometric reader. The biometric reader is what most users are interfacing with on a day-to-day -day basis. The biometric reader is where they're entering their finger to gain access through the door. Let's talk about the individual components that make up each of these categories. There's two types of mass units. First, we have the master unit 524. This is for systems of 24 doors or less. Like all our master units, it comes with completely embedded software. That means there's no server to configure and no software to install. Next, you have your master unit 200. This is for a four door system or less. Again, complete biometric access control software embedded on the device itself that's access over the web. You can see it has an ethernet port where you're plugging into the internet, logging on on a standard web browser, and accessing the software embedded on the device. Again, we've just discussed the master units, the brains of the system, replacing the server and software. Now, let's talk about the door unit. The door unit's connected to the master unit via RS-45. Now, the door unit is where all your inputs and outputs are going into the device. That is your locking hardware, whether it's a door strike or a mag lock, your reader, and your request for exit devices, or any other inputs you would have in your access control system. So again, the master units are the brains of the system, the door units are the arms of the system. That is where your mechanical devices are going in for your access control system. Let's go from the door unit to the fingerprint key. The fingerprint key is connected either Wigan or RS-45 to your door unit. The fingerprint key comes standard with a biometric sensor, and a touch-sensitive keypad. The touch-sensitive keypad means there's no moving parts to wear out over time. The biometric sensor is completely optical. It's actually taking an image of a fingerprint and then running analysis based upon that actual image to determine the fingerprint template. Now that we've talked about the components in a biometric access control system, let's actually wire one. We're gonna have three components in this system. The master unit 200, that's our smaller system for four readers or less. The door unit, again, inputs and outputs, and the biometric reader. We call it the fingerprint key. Let's look at how to wire a master unit 200. The master unit 200 has three components. We have a data connector here for ethernet. Here we have a connector for our power. This is 12 or 24 volt DC. Next to the power connector, we have our data communication connector. This is for RS-45 between the master unit and the door unit. Now let's actually wire the system. Now I've pre-wired our connectors so that we can snap this onto our master unit 200. Here we have our master unit 200 power connection, again 12 or 24 volt DC, and then our RS-485 connection. Let's lock this down. There. And it's that simple. Again, we have our power connector here, our RS-485 connector here, and now we're going to show you how to wire the door unit. First, let's consider the individual connectors you'll find on the door unit. 
Here you have your connectors for your RS-45 and power, again 12 or 24 volts. Here you have your connector for your readers. Each door unit can handle up to two readers, so you have inputs and outputs for reader 1 and reader 2. In this area you'll find your connectors for your locking hardware. Any electronic lock will work, whether it's a mag lock or a door strike. In this area you'll find your connectors for various inputs and outputs, including your request for exit devices, your door sense, and a local alarm. Now that we've talked about what individual connectors do, let's actually wire our system. First, we're going to wire the door unit to the master unit. There are two main connectors that connect the door unit with the master unit. This is our connector for our power supply. It's a 12 or 24 volt DC power supply, the same power supply that's powering your master unit. This is our data communication, RS-45. This is how the door unit communicates with the master unit. Let's lock both these connectors down. Again, power here, data communication here. Let's talk about the wire with the fingerprint key. On a standard pigtail that comes with the biometric reader, you're going to find 12 wires. You're only going to need four for the installation. In this particular installation, because we're using an eData biometric access control system, we're going to wire it RS-45. The yellow and black wires are your RS-45 communication between the fingerprint key and your door unit. The red and black wires are your power for the fingerprint key. One special note about power for the fingerprint key. The fingerprint key can use 12 or 24 volt DC. At 12 volt DC, the fingerprint key draws 450 milliamps. So make sure you have sufficient power to power the fingerprint key. It's almost a half an amp. Now we're going to connect the fingerprint key to the door unit. Again, we have a connector for power here and data here. The fingerprint key is actually powered through the door unit. Whether it's 12 or 24 volts, the door unit transforms that into a 12 volt DC connection to the fingerprint key. Now let's connect this to the door unit. Let's first lock down the power here, and then we'll lock down the data communication, RS-45. As you can see, we have a wired system between our master unit here and our fingerprint key here. In a typical installation, you would wire your locking hardware here and then other input and output devices. Now that we have the fingerprint key connected to the door unit and the door unit connected to the master unit, we've created a complete system. In order to be connected to the master unit, we'll plug in our Ethernet cable this will allow us to log on to the embedded software found on the master unit. Let's do that now. And then we take the other end and we either connect it to a local computer or a router. So there you have it. We have a completely web-ready access control system with biometrics. Our fingerprint key is connected RS-45 to our door unit. Our door unit is connected RS-45 to our master unit and our master unit is connected to the local area network through the Ethernet port. Now that we've connected all the components, let's actually power this system and commission it. Lights will indicate that power has reached the master unit, door unit, and fingerprint key. Now that we've connected the components and powered the system, we are ready to enroll new users. Congratulations on installing your first biometric access control system from eData. To become an authorized reseller, call 866-807-3549 and schedule a webinar for further training.